We're live. Hello out there. This is Kelly with Gia's Italian Kitchen, and we have a super amazing special guest tonight. Keegan Moore is here. Badger, he is joining us, and we're going to cook the dish that he chose for tonight. Thanks for being here. No, thanks for having me. I'm excited to taste how, how it comes out for real, for real. You think it'll be good? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to help make it, yeah, so yeah. it mean, better be good. I mean, if you take, you know right now seasoning i think will be good okay um, maybe add some butter and then like it'll be good right oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah okay definitely butter. so tonight we are making um, a beautiful dish a risotto with lobster and butternut squash um how can that be bad right so basically we are gonna separate this into a few different pieces where we're gonna cook the squash we're gonna cook the rice and then we're gonna cook the lobster all separate and pull it together at the end um, just so that the flavors kind of mesh at the end, but um, I like to do those separately so they um, kind of crisp up, the butternut squash crisps up, and the lobster is gonna look really cool. Like if you saw that picture and you got the lobster tail, um, we'll have that presentation. So um, the first thing that we are gonna do is get the shrimp ready. Um, Karen, could you grab the shrimp out of the fridge? And the lobster can probably stay in there. So let's get all the shrimp out. What we're gonna do with the shrimp, this almost goes to towards like a paella from Spain. Um, we're gonna take the shells off of the shrimp and use them as part of the broth, which is gonna just bring an amazing flavor to, um, to the risotto. So all of these are raw. So what we're gonna do, and we're gonna tag team this. and get, get our hands really dirty and gross. <laughs> Roll up the sleeves. Roll up the sleeves, yep. So we're gonna take the shrimp and just take the tails off. And then we're gonna save the shrimp. Here, let me get this out of the way. Save the shrimp, save the tails. And then we're gonna cut them. So I'll give you this bag. I'm gonna start with this bag. And then we've got multiple um, cutting boards so that we can cut the shrimp and then we'll get rid of these cutting boards so that we can cut other things and not have the shrimp on there. Are we putting them in here? Yeah, so just put the shrimp in there and maybe the tails just back in the bowl. Okay. And then we will add those. Oh, these are the ones that... No tails. Oh, no tails. Okay, cool. So we'll put those over here and I'll help you with this, with the tails. Badger, have you ever peeled shrimp before? Oh, yes, I've peeled shrimp before. <laughs> Okay, where are we doing? Tails, where does shrimp go? Tails here, shrimp here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if your shrimp are thawed, this should be relatively easy. Let me get this. They seem pretty thawed. On juicy. Okay. So you've got the tail. If you squeeze the tail at the end, that part pulls off. And then, <laughs> and then the rest of it, you kind of just fold it off, and it should come off in a pretty decent sized piece, so it shouldn't be too horrible. Now I purchased ones that were already de-veined because- um, We don't want the veins in there. That's disgusting, yeah, right? That's not <laughs> and we don't want to do that either. So um, if you purchase those that are de-veined ahead of time, More that'll- power to you. Mm -hmm, it'll save you time too. But if you didn't, um, maybe grab a helper and the, as the shrimp is coming off, the the skins you'll want to get those veins off so there's a vein on the top here and there's sometimes a vein on the underside but the one on the top side is the really grody one and it's black so you should be able to easily see if it's been deveined or not um and i don't think we want to talk about what the <laughs> what the vein is but you don't want it <laughs> Definitely not. um it doesn't add to the flavor. It does. Uh, <laughs> it would probably add a really bad flavor. Yeah, we'll add. It's not good. So we have a pound of shrimp here. Um, we are going to use two cups of risotto um, with this one pound of shrimp. You don't have to do the shrimp, but it really does add a nice flavor to this. Um, and if you don't have a full pound, no big deal. This is, you know, the joy of cooking versus baking is we can be approximate. So um, if you don't have a full pound, it's it's not a big deal. 
Okay, so, Keegan, do you like to be called Keegan or Badger? Um, it just depends if I'm working or not. You know? Are you working right now? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're cooking, you're not working. When you're working, you're singing, right? Uh, you know, it's a multi-faceted job. But, um, sometimes my job requires public appearances and stuff as well. So, is this, this is a public appearance, right? That's what I'm saying, this is super public. Yeah. You know what I mean? I gotta, I gotta appear, I gotta appear the right way for the people, you know? This is G the Talent, Talent the Kitchen. That's right. This is not just no ordinary kitchen right here. <laughs> this is G the Talent the Kitchen. So, Keegan slash Badger is uh, home for the holidays, so that's why we nabbed him to come, come on to our show. He's a family friend, and we are so, so happy that you wanted to come cook with us. This is so amazing. I'm glad to be here. I've, I've heard amazing things about the food and the experience and stuff. Thank you. you know, so I just wanted to come here and experience it for myself and, and kind of add a little bit of, you know, my flavor to the food because one thing people don't know about me is that I'm an exceptional cook, you know. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that about you. I'm probably the best cook in the family that I have. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, with that being said, like, it's, it's like a, you know, like when they be like, fun fact, you know what I mean? Fun fact, yeah, okay. Yeah. Keegan is the cook. Yeah. Fun fact. No, no, Keegan, he just chill, but Badger... Oh, Badger's the cook. Okay. Yeah, he, he really puts in that work, you know? Ah, yeah. That's awesome. Like, my little sister likes... She, she loves my cooking and my flavor. Aw. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you like to make? Um, It just depends on the day, you know, but, you know, breakfast... I like to make all different types of breakfast foods, really. You know what I mean? Then Is that I'm one like, of your favorite meals? Breakfast? Well, no, it's just the first one that I mastered cooking. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. But I love also making a nice dinner, you know what I'm saying? Cooking chicken, making it nice and juicy, savory, you know, with some nice rice, you know, maybe. Maybe, I, oh, I make, a, I make a really good cheeseburger. Really? Probably, like, it's world famous. What do you put in your cheeseburger that makes it world famous? It's just how I do it. You know what I mean? You know how like you go to McDonald's, you be like, oh, this is like a trademark taste. You know, it's like, yeah, 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 it's trademarked. Okay. So it's just trademarked. That's, that's awesome. yeah, okay, so the garbage like. is right in front of you. Oh, but so for the technical answer, the technical answer since we're on a cooking show, yeah, I think it would just be the the way I season it and then how I cook it. You know. What I'm okay. Saying? But the main thing about cooking, what I learned is you can tell me if I'm wrong. It's about the love you put into it. Oh, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, it's not about 100%. it's not about the recipe. Yep. It's not about the ingredients. It's about the time and effort yep. that you really kind of put into it. You know? Okay, so there's soap right there in that. Um, thing and there's towels behind you okay so we're just washing up and then we're gonna get rid of your cookie or your cutting board there okay so next we are going to um, warm up the chicken stock so you want to get that medium saucepan um, on your stove turn it on medium heat we're gonna add the um, six cups of, of chicken or vegetable stock and we're gonna bring it to a low simmer and then just turn it to low we want it to get really warm and stay warm because we're going to keep adding it to the risotto and you don't want that cold because then your risotto is going to take forever. So I'm just going to get this on kind of medium high to start and I'm going to dump in my chicken broth. So um, if you emailed us ahead of time, you received the class packet, which has, you know, had the grocery list and the recipes in it. Um, one thing that I noted is that depending on the rice that you purchased, um, you may or may not use all the chicken broth. So I'm just gonna put a little extra chicken broth in my pot and if I don't use it, fine, but, um, and then if you run out, you can just use water, hot water. But I'm gonna just put all this in there so, whoops, so that I have enough and bring this up to temperature. So they're having a little trouble hearing your voice, they said. Okay, let me turn this up a little bit. Okay, there goes the volume. Okay, there we go. Is hopefully that's better. Okay, and then in front of you in the back is recycling. Let me toss that your way. Kevin and Caitlin are saying hello. Hello. Kevin and Caitlin. Hello, thanks for joining. Are you cooking or are you just watching Kevin and Caitlin? They have an answer to you. Okay, well, please in the chat, we do have some friends uh, here in the studio audience. 
monitor in the chat. So if you have a question or a comment or you need us to repeat something, um, please throw some comments in the chat and they will shout those out and we'll get your questions answered um, or repeat whatever. So um, tell us where you're from. Like you probably don't have any questions yet, but tell us where you're from. Tell us where you're logging in from. We would love to know um, the audience tonight. We've got Holly from Lake Forest, Illinois. Awesome. Hello. Mom, Julie, and Chris from Des Moines. Oh, nice. Okay. Matt Moore is excited to be cooking with you. Awesome. And Matt Scarlata says, ciao, Gia. Oh, ciao, ciao. Thanks for joining. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, skins that we just took off those shrimp into the chicken broth. And we're going to just let those start to simmer and flavor our broth. Okay, next we are gonna do um, a little butter. This will be easy. So what we're gonna do is um, just kind of get this out of the way. We're gonna put um, butter and um, thyme and some garlic in a very small saucepan and let it uh, melt. And then at the very, very end, we're gonna do a little magic um, with the lobster with that. So we'll get that going. And then um, the other thing that we need to get going is the squash. So turn your oven to 400 degrees and then we'll start doing these other things. So middle left bake, yep. And then 400 and then start. Perfect, okay. Caitlin says they're out spirit shopping for the holidays. <laughs> awesome. So we have paired this with a Vermentino and Keegan is drinking a red, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's whatever your preference is. Salud. Salud. It's cheers in Italian. <laughs> okay, let's do the squash and the butter. So we're gonna do, we've got two butternut squash and um, we're gonna cut these. Most of the meat that we want is in the long section. Most of the seeds are in, I don't know what this is called, kind of the butt of the, <laughs> the squash. Um, the there's root. the what? The root. Okay. Well, well we don't want the seeds. We just want the meat. So there's two ways that you can do this. So I'm going to give you a peeler and you decide how you want to do this. Um, you can do a vegetable peeler and then slice it, or I like to just slice it and then just cut off the the skin because um, we don't want the skin. Right. Um, but the skin is kind of tough. So some people like to try to do that. And it's not, it's not really very easy. So if, if you like that way, have at it. Oh, see, look at you. See, that's gonna be easier. I'm gonna get going this way. So I'm just cutting the nub off the top. And then you should have no seeds in this first section. So I'm gonna cut these probably about a half an inch. Nice. About a half an inch thick. So what we're going to do is we're going to cube these into bite-sized pieces and put them in the oven. Watch your fingers. Yep. Why is that? How, you, how should you use it? Which direction should away you always go? Away from your body. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and away from your fingers. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to keep cutting I'm feeling risky, though. Sometimes you got to switch it up, you know. Because the angle's wrong or, like, you missed a piece, right? Sometimes you just need a little bit of danger in your life. <laughs> okay, so Keegan, while we are cutting up the squash, tell us what's going on in your world today. What's happening out there? Today? This week, this month, this, this year, week? this year. Like, what's happening with you? Well, tell us what's going on with you. We've seen lots of stuff out on social, um, but we want to hear it from you. So right now, I am currently finishing up Far From Famous, which is a project I've been working on for the last couple of years. You know, just a compilation of different music and and uh, art pieces that I've been working on. I'm just trying to uh, get that out to the public because it's been a while since I've dropped a full length project. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's just been my main focus. But other than that, I've just been performing a lot in the Boston area as of late, um, as of like the last couple of months. Just uh, getting in tune with their music scene. And I've had a couple of shows for the Celtics and um, So Far Sounds and 
at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, so I've just been trying to perform as much as I can because it's something that I love to do. And then, uh, yeah, I'm traveling a lot out west to LA to work on my music. Okay. And working with a lot of different producers. Um, also working on a couple of screen rights, stuff like that. So I'm just staying creative and going project by project and just trying to maximize my capacity. Nice. Sense, you know? So what, when the project is done, what will that look like? Is it an album or something else? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's like an album. It would be like an album. Okay. Yeah. So when you say artwork, like you're doing your own artwork for the album, is that what you mean? I just like, like, for example, like if you were to see a music video, like it would be from my oh, actual okay. property okay. as well. You know? Got it. Just my ideas, stuff from my head going into the, the work. So. Okay. So how was it performing for the Celtics? Tell us more about that. It was cool, you know. I, was, I grew up a Celtics fan, so it was somewhat of a like a full circle moment to be able to perform. It was like their... You could probably just stop. Just cut yeah. it, right? <laughs> So what I would do now is just put it on your board, take that big knife, cut, you know, cut that off, and then that we don't want. And then this, you're going to cut into, like I did, into these half inch But they're slices. not going to look as good as that because that was like a perfect cylinder. <laughs> so you can put your nubs in here and then, yeah, you don't want those. So just put those away. Yeah. And then cut those. Watch your fingers. We don't want any blood in our risotto. No Perfect. Blood. No blood. Okay, so I'm. We're just cutting all the skin off of these. So we're going from here to here because we don't want the skin. Um, now I know this is kind of a pain, but we don't want the skin, and it's going to be a little easier to cube these and then cook them in the oven and then add them to the risotto a little bit later. Um, if you've watched any of our episodes before, sometimes we just cut these into the circles or long um, slices and like we put pesto on it. So um, if you haven't seen that episode, scroll down in the Facebook and or the YouTube Jesus Italian Kitchen and check those out. That we leave the skin on because it kind of helps the structure as it cooks. But for this, we don't want the skin. Caitlin wants to know if you can show a close up of how much of the skin you're in the leaf part, white part, or... Yeah, you want to get all the white off and, I mean, you'll end up getting a little bit of the orange, but you, in the end, you don't want any of that. So would he want to trim, that would, skin. would Badger want to trim his then a little bit more, maybe with a knife? Yeah, so maybe try this, like put it down flat and then just kind of go around. Yeah, and just get, yeah, just get those off a little bit and use the board to help, help you. Okay, so while he's doing that, I'm almost done with these. The next thing we need to get going, of course, is the risotto. So we're gonna start with um, onions and garlic and some spices, and then we'll get that, get the rice in there. So I'm gonna shift to the onions here. So we need two, well, I'm doubling this recipe because I've got a little studio audience here with me tonight. So yay, yay, woo! Uh, there we go. I was like, that was a lame no. studio audience, folks. Can I hear from the studio Ooh. audience? Ooh. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Okay, so the recipe is one onion. I'm doing two, just that's why I'm mentioning it. So we're going to cut the skin off. And I'm going to cut mine in half. If you've watched, you know, TV shows with the, the whole onion... Um, and they do the, do you know how to do that? Mm -hmm. Where you do the chop, yeah. chop, 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 yeah. and then, I don't know how to do it. It never, it never works. It never works. I, do it too. Yeah, I need to take lessons on that. Okay. So I am just going to cut mine the way that I know how to cut mine, which is taking the skins off and then dicing, slicing and then dicing. Slice and dice. Slice and dice. And that's part of, uh. Part of what makes Jesus Italian Kitchen different than like watching, oh my gosh, this, this skin doesn't wanna come off. There we go. Watching a TV show, because if you've noticed, we've prepped nothing, right? So um, 
the goal is that we prep you guys ahead of time and then when we get to the live show we're doing everything together it's interactive you've got the chat on uh and we can answer your questions and we're showing you how to do absolutely everything so that we don't magically show you the finished product and you go wait, wait, wait what just happened so that that is what makes us different and uh hopefully you guys emailed us and you got the packet so that you had that prep ahead of time. If you did not, feel free to email us and we can send that out to you later. Kelly at GSItalianKitchen.biz so that you can have the packet and the recipes in the grocery list if you're just watching this and not cooking with us. But thanks for joining, even if you are. Oops, sorry. Did I just fling an onion at you? Okay. So we are going to do a little bit of uh, garlic. And um, olive oil and butter into our big skillet. So the big, big skillet that I mentioned, let me show you mine. Actually, I'm gonna give my chicken stock and shrimp a stir here. It looks like they're starting to get warm, so that's good. This is my big skillet. It's huge, how many quarts is this? Five and a half quarts, but it also has big sides uh, because we're going to put everything is going to end up in here at the end. So we're going to put a couple of tablespoons of butter and a couple tablespoons of olive oil Oops. and get these melty for the onions. All right. So I'm going to turn this on medium heat so that we can get it warmed up and get the onions going. Somebody wants to know is there a reason why she couldn't, he couldn't use extra shrimp in the recipe? You can use as much shrimp as you want, absolutely. Um, the shrimp is going to be added at the end, so it's not going to impact the cooking of the risotto. So if you want to add extra shrimp, absolutely go for it. Um, I'm actually going to give these back to you. Oh, I'll take them back. <laughs> Them and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So we're going to cook these um, on a toss cookie sheet. One. Yeah, just toss that one. So you're going to take your your butternut squash, and I'm going to cut these maybe into, I would say, three or four strips like that. Okay. So that, can you see that? Then I'm going to dice them up so that in the end, you've got bite-sized pieces because these are gonna, after they cook, they're gonna go right in the risotto. So this is what you're gonna look like in the end. Just a bunch of cubes, okay? Whoop! So that, we're gonna cut all those circles of squash up, and then we'll put them on the cutting board, or on, on the cookie sheet. Can you guys see him? There's his cutting board, there. We wanna make sure they can see you artistically cutting <laughs> your squash. <laughs> there we go. All right. So I heard, you know, Badger, you said you're working on a album. When's that coming out? This you know? is quite the interactive crowd we have here. <laughs> That's why the studio yeah. audience is yeah. fun. Yeah. We want questions. It's always like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell us what's going on. Elaborate. Tell us more. Um, I don't have a date. I don't have a... I wasn't... Depending on uh, dropping a release date okay. on this. Oh, okay. But, uh, Do, yeah. Are you supposed, you know, are you, um, like when you go public with it, you have an announced date? Yeah. Or a drop date? Yeah. That you when announce? I, Is that how it goes? Yeah. Like once I pick a date, I gotta stick with that date. And that's the date, you know what I mean? And I announced it, you know what I mean? So it's a thing. So have you picked it, but you're not gonna tell us yet, or you just haven't picked it yet? Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> Are you going to sing for us? No. <laughs> just, a little, just a little bit? A little bit? Uh-uh. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's just part of it, you know. It's just, I'm here, I want to I wanna put all my creative energy into making this risotto. <laughs> that's your um, point. Once it starts to flow, it's like it's hard to get it back, really back in, you know. Mm -hmm. Like look at look at how I'm dicing this. Like, Those are perfect. Look at here. Let's let's lift up your cutting board. Look at his squash. Isn't, aren't those perfect dices? Mm-hmm. That's what 
That's what we want yours to look like. <laughs> and if you can get them to be roughly the same size, that's better because then they're gonna cook more evenly in the oven. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my onion and dice these up. So I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm slicing them and then I'm dicing these into really small, yeah. into a, a fine chop basically. And I'm gonna put them in that big skillet that I just showed you so that we can get the risotto going. Okay, so I wanna hear more about the Celtics. Tell me, how did that happen? So, uh... They had reached out to my manager. They were looking for, you know, something. They had like this anthem that I created uh, for the Berkeley College of Music in uh, Boston. Okay. And they were really feeling the uplifting. Because um, I had created it for the students, like the, like the high school and uh, what's it called? Middle school students that okay. are like in the Berkeley program. Oh. Kind of like a like an uplifting anthem for them to like... Uh, to sing like year by year to like inspire them to like go for their goals and stuff, you know what I mean? Like they can be what they want to be. Okay. So they liked that song and they wanted that to be like the song to uh, intro them into um, the Celtics into like how like they name the players and stuff like that for the for the tip off gala. So they, they were looking for that type of vibe, but they also wanted something like new and like that the players might like, so. Okay. They had me do that song for the intro and then they wanted me to also perform at their like after party. So it was like a, it was just a cool event that they wanted me to. How amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was really, wow. really fun. Well, the, the photos that you had online looked super cool. Oh, there goes the onions. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more because I wanna show you guys how I make them. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys how I make them. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna like the Celtics a lot, you know. It was cool to be able to perform at their biggest gala. Wow. So what is the tip-off gala? What does that mean? Um, it's just like something that they have annually to to get them ready for the season. It's okay. mostly for their like the players come, but it's a lot for their vendors and it's like fundraising for their stuff. So like okay. a lot of like the high rollers from the from the organization are there all the high rollers and all their people that you know, kind of like invest into the Celtics for there as well. Okay. But it was a lot Got of people. It. it was like 900 people there. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it was, uh, I never heard of it before that day, but it was, it was the job that was on the camera. You know? <laughs> yeah. Was that a highlight for you though? Uh, yeah, yeah. it was a highlight, um, because it was the biggest crowd that I performed for so far. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. It was, a uh, that was definitely a highlight. Well, our studio audience is not that big, but if you feel like belting out, you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was um, here in town, you visited one of the, was it an elementary school this uh, week? Middle school. Middle school? Okay, yeah. tell us about that. What, what did you do there? Uh, so I went in there and I just kind of, First, I just wanted to see, I wanted to get them out of like their head a little bit, you know? So like I wanted to like ask them like to like tell me like what would make them feel more creative like at school, like what activities and stuff that would make them feel more creative. That's how I kind of wanted to start off talking to them. You know, kind of get them out of the mode of feeling like they were like in jail or like in school, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's so that worked for some of them, you know, because some of them were like, saying creative stuff, but a lot of them were still like saying what the principal would want them to say, like be, be responsible and all that. But I'm like, I'm asking you for creative activities. You don't have to say that you gotta be responsible. I want you to say like what an activity would be to make you feel creative, you know what I mean? So it took me a little while to get them in that mode, but I feel like it helped. And then I also just opened up the floor and allowed them to ask me questions about being a rapper, working in the studio, traveling, anything that they wanted to, just to ask me questions. I just wanted to, uh, bring some positivity into the, to the school. Cause like, I remember growing up in school for me, I always wanted to, um, I always wanted somebody to like come in. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody that like did something cool to come in and like talk to us and like show us attention. Like I always felt like that would make a difference and like it never would happen. Okay. So like, I always try to like do that for like kids. Cause like, you know, like I know that how much that means to like the kids, like self-esteem or like, you know, like all the kids aren't gonna listen, but 
as long as you plant the seed with one person, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? So did you you goal. didn't go to that school though, did you? No. How, how did you get hooked up with them? I'm not even really from here like yeah, that. Yeah. You didn't really grow up here. Um, but uh, my cousin, she works. She's a teacher there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. she uh, she wanted me to. She shows me my music a lot, so I went there and, and showed up for them and signed some autographs for them and stuff like that. So it was cool. It was definitely cool. Um, what kind of questions did the kids ask you? Because they're little, right? They're like 10 years old, yeah. right? Well, no, they were like 13. 13, okay. Yeah, they were 8th grade. 8th grade, So like okay. they were almost high school kids. Okay. So like um, they asked me all different types of stuff, like... One of them asked me, like, did I ever know or meet anybody famous? And then I just told them, like, it just depends, like, what they determine as famous, because I find them to be more famous than anybody famous I've ever met. Like, if that makes sense. That's um, so cool. I, they also, like, was asking me, like, <laughs> if they could have a feature <laughs> on the song. Like, they're like, can Oh, you funny! <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to get on songs. They also asked me about, like, um, like songwriting a little bit and like how to write a song stuff like that. Ah. They also asked me to rap and I said no. <laughs> Why not? Why didn't you rap for them? Because I want them to understand it's a profession, you know. Like, and like if like you know sometimes like I want them to understand that like just because I say I'm a rapper doesn't mean that like, you snap your fingers and I rap. You know what I mean? Because I have to like. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's beats and there's music. And, you you know have to warm up. Like a, no, I don't. No? But, like, I just don't want them to think, like, I dance on command. You know? <laughs> That's good. That's fair. That's totally fair. That's fair. Let's jump into this real quick, um, and then we'll we'll have some more chatting. Um, so we're going to do some olive oil, salt, and pepper onto the butternut squash and toss this around. So just enough to get that coated. And then we're going to put that in the oven. Ooh, that does look good. <laughs> Did I put too much on it? No, it's okay. It's saucy. It's saucy. It's saucy. It's saucy. Right. We get so, saucy in Jesus Italian kitchen. We, get, we love getting saucy in Jesus Italian kitchen. <laughs> so I have a piece of parchment paper down. I know you guys can see this. Down on there. You don't have to do that because it's just the squash. But it will, um, if you're making you know, some other dishes and maybe with this. It just helps so it stuff doesn't stick. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. You don't need a whole lot because we obviously are gonna have a ton of flavors going on here. Okay, then would you please just put that in the middle rack of that lower oven? <laughs> this is what a chopped squash, nice and saucy, Woo! with pepper, nice little seasoning. This is what it looks like, Rachel Ray. We're coming for you. <laughs> we will get there. We will absolutely get there. I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, we've been watching that for like 20 years. Uh -huh, you know, right. It's a little bit time for a refresh button. You know? That's right. That's right. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is add some fresh sage. Mmm, smell that. Oh, that's amazing. To the onions. So this is going to be the base for the risotto. So I'll give this to you. Why don't we Chopping cut it? like that? Do you so, have a uh, burn sage in your house? Oh, yeah, like the sticks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I cut just the top leaves off, and it'll end up being probably a little bit more than a a teaspoon, but um, again, onions. we're, yeah, fi very finely. Um, we're also doubling the recipe. So in the end, you want for the serving four to six, about one teaspoon of that after it's been finely chopped. Um, so I'm just gonna give my onions a stir here. Okay, so for the squash, I'm gonna put a timer on here. I think I did, did I say 15 or 20 in the recipe? Um, 15. 15, okay. Uh, wait, wait, no, look. 20. Yeah, okay. So 20, 20 on your timer for the squash in the oven at 400. Um, and then while he is cutting up the sage, we have to get the butter that we mentioned earlier. So we're going to do, I think, what is this? Four tablespoons of butter? Yeah. Four tablespoons. We're going to use a whole stick of butter tonight, guys. <laughs> 
So four tablespoons of butter. And this is gonna be um, what we're doing with the lobster at the end. So I'm gonna just bring this over here and put this on, on super low. That's awesome. See, I was talking about Rachel Ray, but I learned a lot from her too. You know? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so if you wanna um, put that into this, um, so he's putting the fresh cut sage into um, the butter. And then we're going to add some garlic and let that just simmer on a low for just a few minutes. And then we'll end up turning it off because then that'll be ready for later. Okay, so if you have, if you've ever watched my show before, you can see what I'm doing here. This is the garlic and the olive oil. So this is my one of my favorite tricks. So you know how like at the big box stores you can buy the whole garlic cloves mm -hmm. that are already pre-shucked. Right. I like buying those because I hate shucking the garlic. Okay. But then what I do is I put the whole bag in the Cuisinart yeah. and chop them up and then you fill this with olive oil and you can keep this in the freezer for like months. Okay. And then you we didn't have to shuck any of the garlic or chop any of the garlic. We just go psh, and you're done. So even if you're doing a stir fry, this is a wonderful tip um, to just make all of your recipes that much easier. Okay, so let's toss this. Then I'm gonna give you another chopping duty. Then we need the, the thyme. So this is fresh thyme. This is so little. It looks like oregano. They're very, very close in what they look like. And these are also going to go in there. So if you can, you can do the stems and all. So just chop that as little as you can get. Oh, yum. Okay. So that has been going for a few minutes. Um, we want to get um, the risotto going. So the next thing that we need to do after, oh, actually, let's add some garlic, I think, to the onions also. So if you don't have that garlic mixture made already with the olive oil you're going to do a few um Where's cloves it? that is going to go in the big pan you're going to do uh, a few cloves of garlic and you know crush them get the get the, sh the skins off and then chop them really really fine and put those actually in both you'll put them in with the butter you'll put them in with the onion if y'all can smell y'all don't know what's going on have you seen Willy Wonka? Do you remember that show, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. Do you remember the smell of vision Yeah, I do remember Wouldn't that be cool? That like, we should invent smell of vision Don't okay? tell Mark Zuckerberg that, because he would probably <laughs> make that. Because we're on his platform. He's probably listening and all types of stuff. Do you think he's watching tonight? Oh, uh, he might. If he knew what good food is, he's watching. You know what if he knew anything. Okay, so I'm just stirring up these onions and the garlic. What's up with this right here? What are you doing? Oh, so that's parsley. You can chop that. We're not going to use that yet, but we can certainly chop it and get it out of the way. Um, that is at the end. We will add that to the risotto. Okay, okay. Um, and then... I'll just keep myself off. And yeah, go for it. Okay, so my butter is melted, so you can let that simmer a little bit if you want um, to let the herbs and the garlic kind of come come together and saute a little bit, um, but it doesn't need too much because really the whole point of that is just to melt it. Um, next, wine. We want to add some wine to the um, mixture. So um, let's see, are we adding? No, we need to get the rice in there first. So this Arborio rice, you can use whatever rice you want really, but this is, is uh, the best rice to get um, the, the risotto to get really absorbed and creamy and delicious. So we're gonna add all of the rice all at one time into that large skillet. So the recipe that I gave you guys calls for two cups. I'm gonna double this again, just so that we have um, enough for our live studio audience. This is a lot. Maybe I'm not going to double this. Maybe I'm going to do three. I'm going to do one and a half. That's a lot. Okay, so then we're going to just toss this whoops, for just a couple minutes so that it's totally coated with the onion mixture. 
and we're browning the rice just a tad, but not really. We're really just trying to get it coated and warmed up. You then, don't want to make it too brown. What'd you say? You don't want to get it too brown. No, because we definitely don't want it to burn or get crispy or anything just yet. Okay, so once really once it's all coated, we're gonna start adding the wine. So um, half a cup of wine if you added your two cups of rice, and then I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit because what we want to happen is we want the wine to cook off, and then we will um, head for the chicken stock. So I'm gonna add a full cup of white wine here with that heat up. Oh, can you hear that? How's the volume? Can you guys hear everything? I know somebody mentioned the little volume issue earlier. Hopefully that's been resolved. Okay, so we're gonna let that simmer for a few minutes. Then the next thing that we are gonna do, what else do we need to do? Um, we can cut the spinach, that's at the end. You're the veggie cutter, dude. You want to cut the spinach too? So this is at the end also. Um, this is fresh leaf spinach, baby spinach, or regular fresh spinach. We're just gonna kind of chop this up into, um, maybe, I love it. yeah, maybe just like in half. It doesn't need to be too, um, too small because it'll wilt a lot when, when we put it in there, but it will add just a nice pop of color um, at the end for the risotto. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little check here. Actually, well, I can see. said it's still pretty quiet. It's Actually, still pretty I'm quiet? It's still pretty quiet. Okay, let me turn it up again. I almost maxed her on the volume, that's weird. Okay, turning it up. Okay, hopefully that's better. Um, so let's do a check-in and see how you guys are doing. Uh, we've got Badger doing the uh, spinach. Perfect, yeah. And we've got the squash in the oven. On the stove, we've got several things going on. We've got the rice that we just added the white wine to. And that is actually starting to absorb already. And the wine is starting to disappear, which is what we want. Then we've got our butter and our herbs and our garlic over here. That'll be at the end for the lobster. Turn that back on low. And then in our other larger saucepan, we have the chicken broth that's simmering with the shrimps. Shrimps, the, just the skins. Is so, there a preference you have on chicken broth, Kelly? I mean, I like to buy organic if I can, okay. um, just because I don't want the hormones and, and, and the and pesticides. Uh, I think that's kind of a health question. Okay. I don't, I don't personally buy no salt because then, then I feel like I add salt to the recipes. So um, I just buy low sodium or regular. Uh, you can also buy bone broth, which has added nutrients in it. Um, you know, if you think of, you know, after Thanksgiving, you have your your big turkey and you make a stock with the bones, that has a lot of added nutrients to it. Um, so you could do that as well. Okay, so the rice is actually already <laughs> absorbed all the wine. So if you are to that stage, what you need to do is grab, let's see, a strainer. So I've got a pretty fine mesh strainer. Let me just show you how fine that is. It's not like a vegetable strainer. The reason you want it fine is because we're gonna scoop the broth in. We don't want any of the shrimp shells to land in there. So I'm just gonna kind of hold this over the pot and I'm gonna take about one cup at a time and dump it right into the rice. And we're gonna do this until, basically until we feel like the rice tastes like how we want it to. Like I mentioned earlier, we may or may not use all of the liquid. This will probably take about 15-ish minutes for the rice to fully cook. Um, Do so, you cover the rice? You know, we're gonna cover it at the end, but for risotto, you don't, because the risotto, you add the liquid okay. in parts, okay. and then you have to stir it constantly. So mm. when you think of risotto, that is 
probably the the onerous part of making it that people are like, eh. I'm trying to stay away from that sometimes. Just because you have to babysit it. Okay. Um, so that's really the biggest difference from making a regular rice is that you have to babysit it and keep stirring it and keep adding it versus a regular rice where you're putting all the liquid in and putting the top on. Okay. Um, but it, I don't, you know, to be honest, I don't know the science of it on like how it hydrates different, but it does turn out like super creamy and amazing. Um, so when you get, get to the end of this, it's worth it. Um, so if you've got your heat on kind of medium, that chicken broth is going to disappear also quite quickly. So I'm going to keep adding the liquid because you don't want the rice to stick to the bottom and burn. So you need to keep adding and keep stirring. And just going all the way around the edges nice and slow because this is going to get to be a pretty full pan. Okay, so why don't we um, get the lobsters out? We don't, we're not gonna put those in the oven just yet, but we can start prepping those while we're waiting. So uh, there's a box and then there's that Tupperware that's underneath that box there. And we can start prepping those. All right. So, if you did not buy lobster tails and you just bought lobster meat, totally fine. We kind of did this as a treat, so we're doing <laughs> the tail. I was just looking at it. <laughs> we're going to do the tails. So the trick to the tails is, I need to show you though, hang on. Does anyone want to come stir? Okay, let me add a little bit. So we, we have a lucky member from the crowd anywhere. Lucky member from the studio audience. Come on now! And you get a car. <laughs> right. You get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. Okay, so just super slow. Thank you. I'll just give you that. Okay. So basically when it um, gets almost gone, you'll want to add. Um, and then in a few minutes, once you've added, because we've added a couple cups already, then we'll taste it and see um, see how the consistency is. Could you grab those scissors over there? Yes. Okay, so for the lobster tails, we're going to butterfly these. So we're each going to use one of these. Um, and it's going to be for presentation. And they're also going to cook really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to butterfly these. Put the, the butter mixture on them and we're gonna broil them and it only takes like seven minutes. So it's and then they're gorgeous because they kind of poof out of the shell, right? Like in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna have it shell the back up and we're gonna cut without trying to cut the meat. So get as close to the shell as you can and just cut all the way down. You took them good scissors, huh? Are those working? No, they are. <laughs> So you want to get it, but stop when you get to the the flippers. Okay. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get dirty here. We're gonna open it up a little bit. See, I'm but don't take them off. Don't take them oh. off. Oh. No, that's cool. You opened it. Perfect. Okay, okay. Perfect. Yeah, you should know how to do this. You were. You that's why I got happy. I was like, but it's like feeling like ah. <laughs> oh shit! See, I. I just, excuse me, I just lost a shell. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to. What is this? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Part of his insights? I was saying. <laughs> um, we're gonna try to pull away. So without breaking the shell off, okay. we're trying to pull the skin away. Oh, okay. So that it has oops, the opportunity to. to to puff up, yeah. And we're kind of yeah, lifting it out a little bit. I know it's tricky. Lifting it out. Actually, do this. This works. Go to the underside and kind of stick your finger under there, and that actually loosens it nicely. Oh, like break these little bones right there? Yeah, yeah. And then that's it. So then we'll put them there. If you can pull it up a little bit, 
Yeah, see? And then it comes out just a little bit. So it's still attached. I just want to get these little fans off. And... Yeah, pull it out if you want to pull it out. <laughs> this is what you're eating tonight. <laughs> okay, we're throw we're tossing that. <laughs> okay, so we he's still attached, and we're gonna put it down, and then just kind of lay him on top there. Can you help me with this one? Yeah. I didn't do it right. Did you? Okay, you got that loosened. Yeah, and then we're gonna kind of loosen the side. Oh, it's that part. Yeah. Yep. Then it should lift out pretty easily, and then we'll put the shell down and kind of lay him on top mm. of the shell. Or inside the shell, it'll still poof up. It's okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. I, I see what we're doing. With yeah, that. and then we're gonna just lay these. So we've got a cookie sheet. I put uh, tin foil on here instead of the parchment because since we're broiling it, uh, the parchment will ca possibly catch fire. So you don't want to put parchment in a broil. Um, okay, let me open these. And then, actually, could you go in the fridge? There's one more pack of lobster in the fridge, please. Um, it should be in with cellophane or saran. Yeah, thank you. So we found a different, a few different kinds of, thank you, of lobster here. I think I'm having trouble trying to get it to open. Like a, you know, if I cut it, I don't want to do So that. if you stick your thumb down there, oh, and then, I don't know. Oh, that's a, a tough one, right? That's a tough one. Let's see. <laughs> Let me try. How are you doing over there with the rice? Good. Okay. I'm going to cut this last. Oh, you did cut that last one. Okay, maybe doing the thumb on the back side first, I think, is going to help loosen it. Because that worked for me last time. I mean, the shells are, they're going to crack a little bit. So if, if they do, it's fine. But if they do, take them, take the little pieces out so that you don't end up serving those or eating those. I think this is an art, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It is. It really is. Like, people get really creative with cooking. And it's a creative outlet for them to release a lot of stress that they go through throughout the day. I love cooking. I, I really grew up, so I'm Italian. I grew up um, in the kitchen with my grandma. So for me, like this, this is what I love to do. Yeah. Okay, so. And we love that you do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. Okay, we got a few more here. So for for the folks at home, uh, you probably purchased four to six of these little guys. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he can sink down there. Doesn't matter. Oh wait, no, it's not good. No, it's fine. It's totally fine. Right there. That, that puff. That puff puff. The pass. puff up is the is the drama, right? And then. But then it makes it easier to eat too, right? When when it's served, you're not digging through the tail uh, at the dinner table. So getting these loosened up now is actually gonna be helpful for your dinner guests as well. Um, and then once we get these in the oven, it's purely a, a simple, pretty simple recipe. Uh, this is kind of the hard part that we're doing right now. Once you get past this, um, this makes for a really easy, beautiful dinner. Okay, so we are going to try to get as many of these on here as we can. Um, so how are you guys doing at home? Let's check in. Throw yeah. something in the chat. Tell us what's going on out there. Y'all staying warm? Oh my gosh, it's freezing here. What's the temp today right now? It's like 10 in Iowa right now. It's amazing. It's negative. Six. Wow. Um, it's six, positive six right now. Oh, no, it's 15. 15. Oh, it's only 15. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the timer is going off on the butternut squash. So I'm gonna finish this guy and then we'll go get those out. All right. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. 
Like she said, folks, this is the hard part. <laughs> you gotta just get your hands in there. Just get. I'm hearing that it smells amazing in the kitchen. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, you... How does it smell, guys? Got to smell it? <laughs> studio audience? Yeah, it smells great. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the shrimp broth. You know, this is why, like, certain places they have the light where it's just clap. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me get in here for just a second. I'm gonna take a fork and I'm gonna stab the butternut squash and just see if they are done. And I think they need. So this kind of depends on how big you cut your. Um, your cubes. I'm going to give these a few more minutes. Did you cut them too big? Well, no, they're totally fine. I think since we have a lot on the pan too, um, yeah. we'll just give it a few more minutes and that's totally fine. Um, that gives us more time to do this. And then we'll be close to pulling this all together here. Okay, so I want to hear more about the, the elementary school, the eighth graders. Tell mm -hmm. me more about what what you were talking to them about. Um, it really wasn't like too overwhelming. I just kind of wanted to like give them like a little bit of like inspiration, you know? I feel like sometimes like, especially like as an eighth grader, like you can get so, start getting in the monotonous, you know, monotony of just going into school, listening to teachers, knowing what the school rules are. And, mm -hmm. You know, I just kind of wanted them to get out of that for a little bit and then to like remind them that I just kept reminding them that everything that was made in that classroom or everything that they use was made by somebody like them. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. It's not like somebody super smart or somebody like from another planet came to and created anything that we utilize. So I just wanted them to like realize that. And also I wanted them to just like know that they're all creative. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because like I think sometimes as a creative, you hear people say all the time like, oh my gosh, I wish I was creative. But like we said earlier, like, Cooking is a form of creation, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. talking is a form of creation, you know what I'm saying? Like, hating is a form of creation for some people, because they get creative with it. So, like, <laughs> it's just, people, everybody's creative. I just want people to, well, especially the, the youth, to just understand that this is about tapping into themselves, you know what I mean? So, that's, that was my whole intention of going there, and that's I feel awesome. like that was what some of them got, you know? So, when you were younger, and you were getting into the music industry... How did you kind of find your your thing? Like, how did you know this was your thing? <clears throat> um, kind of like I had to like go back in time with myself and kind of like oh, like realize that I was always drawn to it. You know what I mean? So it was like there was a time where I always liked it. You know what I'm saying? I always liked music, but I thought everybody did. I thought everybody like needed music. I thought everybody like felt the same way or every. You know what I'm saying? But then I had to like realized that like my feeling for it was a little bit stronger than other people's, you know what I mean? And then I realized by looking back in my life how much it was always just right there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How much I was always just in, in it without knowing. So that's kind of like how I first realized that it was like a purpose, you know what I mean, for me. Like I had to just kind of find my purpose in it. And then as time went on, I feel like life kind of just showed me and put me in situations which really showed me that it was my purpose, if that makes sense. So you really um, pivoted, though, because you started out with basketball, and then that wasn't your... You thought it was your thing, but it wasn't your thing, right? No, it was one of my things, but it's just like... So I was making... Like, I always created music, like, even, like, as a young, young kid. Like, I was always writing stuff, like, writing music. Mm, stuff. Okay. But, like... Basketball was like a very like safe and secure thing to do, you know what I'm saying? As okay. I got older, because like it keeps you in school, it keeps mm -hmm. you like out of trouble and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I like to do it. I wanted to be good. Like I had the drive to want to win and want to be good. But it was just I was I was doing both, especially in college. I started doing both. I wanted to start releasing some of my work and some of my stuff that I was working on. Okay. So then that created the 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 push and pull because it was like I love basketball. It was it was something that I love to do, but the drive for music and the, the the talent that I have for music and 
how easily it came to me was something totally, totally different. Like, I worked very, very hard for every little ounce mm -hmm. of goodness that I did for basketball. Some of the stuff for music and create creativity was just natural. Like, it was just second nature. Okay. So I just wanted to follow that more. And it always, like, it was an urge. Like, I would, like, drive three hours on a night before I had 6 a.m. weights without a license and just go record music, you know what I'm saying, while I was okay. in college and okay. come back and then go to weights and stuff like that. It was always okay. pulling me. So I just wanted to commit to it and see where it took me, you know what I'm okay. saying, really dive into it because I was holding myself back, really. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. That's such a great taste story. Like? Yeah, let's taste. Okay. I think it needs more liquid. Okay. Do you have, is there more in that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Keegan, here is the rice. Okay. It's really hot, but see if it's if it's done or if we need more liquid. Is it, is it crunchy? Too crunchy? I think it's close. I think it's close. Yeah, I think it's close. I think it's close. Like, like, absorb a little bit more. Yeah. Well, it's gonna keep cooking. Okay. Um, because we still have to add the rest of the stuff. So, um, you can put a tiny bit in there. Yeah, you can add a little more liquid. I'm gonna take the squash out. Don't need a little light salt. Yeah, we've got more stuff going in there. Okay, so your oven. Your I oven is gonna go. We took the. <laughs> we took the, Don't burn yourself. Okay. We took the squash out, but what we're gonna do now is. Turn your oven to broils and get that ready for uh, the lobster tails. But then close it because we're not putting anything in it yet. But we got we want to get that like ready. Four fifty. Yeah, like four fifty or five or a broil setting, whatever. Um, some of them are four fifty, some are five hundred. It's fine. Okay. Next, we're gonna start adding everything else to the um, risotto. So we got. What do we have left? The shrimp, right? What if we not add it? I'm missing something. It's risotto and Italian. The end. I'm sorry? Is risotto an Italian word? I think so. I just read the, the crazy book right for... about Italy. You did? Yeah. It's called Death in Florence. What's Death in Florence? I just read like this crazy book about Renaissance Italy. Oh. And it was called Death in Florence. What was that about? It was about um Florence, like at like when the yeah. Medici family, oh yeah, yeah, when they went yeah, yeah. out of power and Savonarola started rising oh, in power, yeah, yeah. Okay. and also about the Papal and how they were involved in the whole thing. It was a crazy. It was amazing. It was That's brilliant. A, yeah, yeah, very cool. Okay, so we're gonna add. I'm gonna give this to you because I'm gonna do the squash with the hot pad. So we're gonna add the shrimp and the squash into the risotto, and we're gonna keep stirring and keep cooking. So just dump them in there. Yep. And if you want, you can cut the shrimp in half into bite-sized pieces. We didn't. Um, that's really a preference. Okay, then I'm going to give you this. We're going to do the same thing, but we don't want all that juice. Unless, do you need more liquid? I don't. I don't. So pour the juice out? You know, keep the juice. Um, Very dumb that juice. Unless or don't, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's not hot, though, so no. There's more liquid in here. Is there? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're just adding, and there's a little bit of olive oil coming off of the butternut squash. That's totally fine. So we're adding all that, and then you can dump the rest of that shrimp in there. You want me to put them in one by one? <laughs> sure. <laughs> We've got our, our studio audience member over there in the corner still mixing. So continue stirring, 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 because the liquid is continuing to absorb and it is going right into the risotto and we don't want that to burn in the pan. So the amount of liquid that's in the pan is getting less and less and less. You know you made it when you cook with something in Gia's Italian kitchen. <laughs> That's what you really understand. I love that you're here. This is so fun. This is fun. I thought I wanted to bring with some. You it's know, so some fun. Vibes. Okay, do you want you want to do one more thing? Yeah. Okay. We are going to get the last one. Okay, so what we have is that butter mixture from the little pan, and it's got the garlic and the herbs. 
it. So we're not gonna really dump it because there isn't enough, but this is really just to flavor it and then it's gonna go on top of the risotto, right? So we're, I'm using a brush. So this is my butter and herbs and garlic that's sauteed for a little bit. This is a perfect example of how cooking is art form. Yeah? You have a paintbrush inside of it. Oh, I love it. I have a paintbrush. I do. I didn't think, I don't think of it that way. I think of it like as a baster thingy. That's what but they want is, you to think. It is a thing. So you crack that coat, then you crack that coat, then you'll be on some Patty LaBelle. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know Patty Patty LaBelle after you her shows. Funny. After her shows, after she performs her heart out, after her shows, she goes on her tour bus. Yeah. And she cooks meals for every single one of her it's like her band. Oh I love that. I can do food. that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can be that person. <laughs> <You're gonna> be <laughs> We got Ke Kelly LaBelle in here. <laughs> and, uh, and so cousin. you're gonna, yeah, just, we need enough for all of these, but not those, because those have their own thing on them. So um, in the end, we want to get rid of this, but maybe do a little on each one so that everybody gets everybody a little gets love, and then you can go back and fill it in. Okay, how are you doing? I'm doing good. That looks ridiculous. Ridiculous! I hope your risotto Ludicrous. looks ridiculous. Looks Can I grab the pan? I want to just bring yes. this into the camera and show that. Everything we do, we do great. Oh so we my win. gosh, we and win. it's heavy. Look at this, you guys. The shrimp is in there. The shrimp is already cooking. That takes very few time, a few minutes. The butternut squash is already cooked. So that's just gonna kind of flavor, start to flavor the rice. So then what we need is, um, we've already chopped our parsley. So if you haven't chopped your parsley, you can do that. Um, then we have our spinach, our fresh spinach, and then a little more butter <laughs> and um, the Pecorino Romano. So we use, uh, if you've watched our show before, you've heard me say this over and over again. I love Pecorino Romano, but that's because my no-no used Pecorino Romano um, instead of uh, Parmigiana Reggiana. You can use either one. The, the main difference is that the Romano, Pecorino Romano, is from uh, a goat instead of a cow. So it's a little bit easier on your digestion. You know, if you think of, you know, having cheese and crackers, uh, goat cheese is gonna be a little easier on your digestion than cheddar because it's coming from a cow. So that's kind of the same premise. Um, but the Pecorino Romano, in my opinion, also tastes better. It's a little nuttier. It's um, a wee bit saltier. Um, so that's what I love. So. And we're the goat. And it's a goat. It's from a goat. And we're the goat. <laughs> what? We're the goat. How, what? The goat. <laughs> I want to see if you can explain that to me later. The greatest of all time. Oh, oh that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're funny. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get the show. I'm just trying to get us our TikTok. <laughs> we gotta get these clips in. We're gonna get these clips on TikTok. No. <laughs> I bet Rachel Ray don't know what the goat is. I'm just saying. <laughs> she does. I bet she's looking at me now going, oh my gosh. No, no, no. What the heck? I just watched it the other day. She oh, you're funny. Yeah. How are the lobsters doing? You have enough to goop? I think, think? I think I can okay. goop it a little more. Oh, this yeah. one, I ain't giving no Augustus goop yet. Yeah, just shove it in there. Let's get as to much to as you can in there. Okay, oh, wait, I'm going to come behind you and get the um, spinach. Because the spinach we want to put in the rice so that it wilts. Did you watch the World Cup? Oh, yeah. Today? That just ended. Well, we've been watching it for weeks, right? Today was the final. Today week. was the final. That was crazy. That was a lot. It, it was. was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the soccer, we're talking about the spinach. <laughs> but the soccer was a lot too. <laughs> okay, so we are gently shoving the spinach within and underneath the rice so that it just, I'm going to actually turn the heat off now, so that it just starts to warm the spinach up and starts to How do you feel it. about um, marinating the shell as well? Do the seep in? Oh God, yeah, yeah, you could totally do that. You could, that's a great point. Once you're done with dinner, save the shells, throw them in the freezer, and then you could make broth with them. Lobster broth? <laughs> uh-huh. They don't talk about that much. <laughs> Not everybody got that in April. Yeah, like we did with the shrimp shells. I mean, we didn't take them out of the freezer, but the shrimp were in the, in the freezer, right? 
like you again like you would with the the turkey the turkey um carcass you can keep the lobster shells and just boil them in water for maybe 20 minutes that would make an amazing broth to make a soup good tip what good part tip. of italy is like your family like originated from like your ancestors and stuff so we're from the tuscany region which is around florence okay ironically where the medicis came from um or their house was um and we you know we're up one of those windy little towns that you know that you want to need a, a little wristband so they don't get seasick driving up the mountain um oh that's cool yeah <laughs> and and there's no guardrail so when you're driving and you look down like you might die if the car <laughs> veers off it's one of those little roads going like this so yeah my grandparents came over in the early 1900s those those have the butter on them don't they? well yeah if there's some yeah put them on and then we're gonna get those in the oven so both of my grandparents uh were from on my mom's side were from the florence region the tuscany region so one of them was from uh, Pisa, one of them was from Siena, and one of them was from this this little town, Pieve Pelago, up up uh, up the mountain. So we we love we love just celebrating that heritage and bringing the recipes alive that that I grew up with. So super fun. Uh, let's get these in, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Are you good with those? I need to get this stuff in. Ooh, this risotto. <laughs> So then the last piece for the rice, while those are cooking, the last two tablespoons of butter. So I'm just gonna throw these on top. Take the spoon out. Can I suggest one thing for the rice? Yeah. What? Pinch of salt. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um it's gonna have all that parmesan. Well, well, I was just gonna say, we're gonna put the pecorino romano in here. But here, let's have you taste this because it's like the Parmesan Reggiana, but it's the Pecorino Romano, but oh, it's, 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 but it's huh? very salty. Yeah. So taste that. Here's the Isn't that amazing? That's, that's great. So that's going on top. Okay. Okay, you yeah. good with that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do what, like, I think I said a half a, what did I say, half a cup? That sounds like a lot. What did I say? How much cheese? Third of a cup, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to... This is finely grated, it is not shredded, and I'm going to sprinkle this on the top, and then if you want to grab that big top there, we're going to put that on here while we're waiting. Like <laughs> <laughs> Love having the studio audience, I hope you can hear them. <laughs> and we didn't even have to light up flat. <laughs> This is real. This For is the a, applause This side. is a real experience. <laughs> so the top is on there. The butter and the cheese are in there. Um, oh, you know what? Parsley. Throw that in there. <laughs> in the parsley. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. See, y'all even got a little singing. Like, <laughs> 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 Love it. Okay, so we have five minutes on the lobster, so we're, this is on uh, off, it's off, and the top is on, and it's just going to warm all that stuff up and kind of bring that together, and then we'll toss it at the end. So um, I did want to mention that the, the other thing that Gia's Italian Kitchen does is private group classes. So if you still need a gift for a loved one or a friend, and you would like to give them an experience instead of another trinket or gadget, a private group, group class is a wonderful option. So we select a private menu customized by you and we send you the grocery list and the recipes ahead of time, just like we did tonight, so that everyone is prepared. Uh, if you are local, we can do them in person, we can do them virtually, uh, or we can do a combination. If you have some friends and family and you know, if you're in LA and, you're, and someone's in, in uh, New York and we're here, we can do some live and some virtual 
and we do a private dinner party uh, for you. So that is a wonderful gift experience. So if you would like to check out more details on that or purchase, uh, giazitaliankitchen.biz, B-I-Z, backslash shop, S-H-O-P. Um, giazitaliankitchen.biz, and then shop, uh, the private group class. So uh, check that out and- um, Link in bio. Link in bio. <laughs> So we are a few minutes from, from pulling dinner together. Um, what else would you like the folks out there to know about what is going on in your world today? Far from famous, coming soon. Far from famous, coming soon. Far from famous. Can you give us any hints? <laughs> give us some more hints. Give us a nugget of something. You see this right here? Give him a nugget. Give us a nugget. Give us a clue. But we're giving them lobster. No, give us a... I can't give them no nuggets today. That's not what we cook. But what I can tell you is this. <laughs> I can tell you this, <clears throat> Badger All 2023. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna, it's gonna feel like you see me so much that I'm running for the primary in 2024. Like this is gonna be knockdown after knockdown after knockdown. And I'm trying to say this right now in the most polite way possible. Like this is probably gonna be the greatest dinner that like we've created in Gia's County Station. Like cause we put the love in it. We did put, we put the, the love vibe in it. in it. We had the help from everybody. Like I just feel like. Everything that we're doing this year, we're going up to the top. You know what I'm saying? Far from famous. This is a perfect example of far from famous because people are watching this right now and they're like, yo, like they really on live. They doing this thing. But like, we feel like we still grinding. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. feel like we still trying to make it up. Yeah. There, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's all a, it's a game of perception. You know what I mean? So we're just going to keep it up all year. We don't want to burn the lobster though. <laughs> far from famous coming soon. What's the time? Right? <laughs> They've only been in there five minutes, but they're little. If your if your lobster tails are um, less than six ounces, the the guideline is kind of like one minute per ounce. So if they are small, like these, I think these guys are four ounces, aren't they? These no, are probably not. the whole thing is not. Okay, so let's look at those guys out, and then most of these are six. So you're wanting them to look opaque. You know, when you when you think of a shrimp, how it's like gray when it's raw and then it's white and, and kind of pink and opaque when it's cooked. And these, I think, need another couple minutes. So I'm gonna let those go for the next couple minutes. Is opaque a color? Or is it a texture? It's like a shade. I don't know. You're the artist. That's not actually. Wait, <laughs> switch, because your head's getting cut off. What, I don't know, what is it? I don't know. I, was asking me. I think it's a, I mean, I use it as a description of, um, like, it's not translucent. It's not okay. see-through. It's like off-white. Yeah. Yeah. Um, opaque is okay. not able to be seen through. Not transparent. That was perfect. That was a perfect definition. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. I'm going to get some plates because we're going to. Which is a perfect cooking lesson for people. It's like, life's not always opaque. Life's not always opaque. Or it's not it's always true. transparent. And it's not always transparent either. And people are not always transparent. Some people are completely opaque. Completely <laughs> opaque and not transparent and not not real. They're not genuine. Would you say that? Like genuine. Yeah. But would it be real to be transparent? Or would it be real to be opaque? I think it would be real to be transparent because then you're being honest. But being what if the honest, the most honest version of himself is opaque? Mm -hmm. Justin, up there to yourself. Philosophical conversation. Okay, transparent. Not everybody's transparent. Not everybody. Oh, for not sure. Not everybody has for the sure. capacity to be transparent. That's fair. That's fair. And, and it might not be a good thing for one person, and it is a good thing for another person. And that's it's the yin, and that's the yang. Okay. And that's Ooh. the big, and that's the bang. This is getting <laughs> deep. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We just, we just, we just bringing the vibes here at the time. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's get these lobsters. Let's get dinner. All right. I, I used to want to be Italian growing up. Like, no cap. Really? Yeah, because I like love y'all, like, culture. Like, how y'all, like, like, uh, how y'all cook. You know what I'm saying? Everybody comes in, eats, kisses each other on the cheek. Yeah. It's the love. It's the love. So you know, I, we, we grew up in the kitchen. I mean, that's what it's all about is is 
family and cooking together and bringing those memories together. Pop, 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 pop. Um, it is. Being Italian is super fun. I swear. I feel it right now. I feel like I'm going to adopt it right now. Oh, I love it. Okay, so I'm taking... Let me bring this over here. In the family. I'm going to just give this a gentle toss. So we've got the butter and the cheese and the parsley. Can you guys see this? Yeah, there we go. And then we're gonna scoop some of this onto a plate. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys are smelling what I'm smelling. This is ridiculous. So I'm gonna make a nice little mound. So that this, yeah, looks nice and pretty. And then I'm gonna go get, excuse me, one of my lobster tails. And I'm gonna put this guy right on top. Look at that, oh my gosh. There is your risotto with lobster and veggies. Oh my goodness, okay, that's dinner. So here, let me hold the plate. Let's cheers. Thank you so much for being here. This Thank has been so, so much. much fun. Yo, this is awesome. Food Network, reach out, you know what I'm saying? Lincoln bio. <laughs> Salud. Salud. Cheers. One more time. Yay. Woo! 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 Let's eat. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for Merry joining. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Hanukkah Christmas. and Kwanzaa. Love y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>